people talk about, oh, you should give your artists, you know, their masters. No, because that's how I make my money. How would you feel if a music executive said they would never let you own the music that you created? Well, a legendary music exec, Irv Gotti, said just that, and I'll let him explain why. People talk about, oh, you should give your artists, you know, their masters. No, because that's how I make my money. Like Ja Ashanti, millions of dollars they make every year, yeah. I don't get a dime of that. To Martin show money? Yeah. Okay. I don't get one, one fucking penny of that. All right. So the only thing that I have that I could sell to get me a check is those masters. And you want to take that from me? But do they get pieced off after you sell them? Or? I piece Ja off. Ja got a seven-figure check. That's how I make my money. That's what he just said. Mm -hmm. So let's start here. I know some of y'all might be upset hearing this take, but let's hear him out, right? Is he right? Is there some angle where you could see his side? Let's play devil's advocate and think this whole situation out because it can't all be bad, mm -hmm. right? I know everybody has heard this story before, but like maybe, maybe some of the things that he is he's saying is true, all right? So, do you think there's any validity to what he's saying? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think the the art versus equity conversation is always an interesting conversation, right? Because we we always see artists fall on the side of art, executives fall on the side of equity. But right. I understand. I, I get where he's coming from, right? It's like, hey, you have all of these different opportunities to monetize that are based off of the work that we have done together. Like they have shows, like he mentioned. Um, I'm sure they both have done brand deals. I know they both have done brand deals. They both have been in movies as a result yeah. of the success from their artist careers. All of these different bags. That, I don't get none of that. Yeah, the Earth guy is rightfully, rightfully right, like not, not entitled to. So there is this one vehicle that I legally do have ownership to and legally do have a right to, and I am justified in, you know, in feeling this way because, I mean, we talking about the 2000s, bro. Shit wasn't, we, shit ain't cheap now. Shit definitely wasn't cheap back then. Yes. You know? let's, let's, that's what I'm saying. Let's have the <laughs> real conversation because I would love to see the artist, right, who take this level of investment in another artist and let's see how they feel the same way. Yeah, exactly. Most people who are talking this talk, right, don't necessarily feel that way. Yeah. Right? I mean, or they don't have the experience. I haven't seen anybody who's made that level of investment and then also has had this change of heart and been like, oh, yeah, I don't deserve anything. So if you look at... If anything, it's the other way around. I've seen what? new executives come in with the mentality of like, oh, no, the artist shit, whatever, and they yeah. get deep into it and get more seasoned. Like, oh, yeah, no, fuck that. I should own a little bit more than I thought I would. Exactly, this yeah. is a lot harder <laughs> than I think, and I'm actually betting my whole life, and I'm just taking a percentage. It's not like I'm getting paid like a mm -hmm. salary year on year, so I'm taking a, a massive risk. And I think sometimes that part gets understated. You can say you're you're interchangeable, but then there's um, cool. Then interchange the executives, cool. But you like there's also multiple artists that are successful. So I feel like people need to have the real conversation and look at the real investment because I don't know anybody who uses independent and like artist ownership as their branding ploy that they're using. And then they also make that level of investment in the artist. Mm -hmm. So it's cool if I build my business model around, yeah, artists, y'all should be independent. You should own your masters. And then I build a business model around that. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool. I can stay congruent in that conversation. But if I make that level of investment, I don't think anybody who makes a, a, a significant level of investment to the degree that like a Irv did in a lot of them back in the day, I feel like I don't see anybody who's doing that and saying, Oh yeah, artists are on their masters. I mean, look at Russ, right? Russ like has kind of signed and helped some artists. And I think it's a really artist-friendly deal from what I hear. Mm -hmm. And it's dope, right? But he's also not taking that level of investment, also, because you know he's an artist and he's doing his own thing, right? He makes it friendly. Hey, I, I got resources that are available to you. Take advantage and 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 do your thing, like loosely speaking. I don't know all the the the, the ins and outs, right? Steve Stout stands on, you know. Like, yo, artists, y'all should, should own your masters, right? Independence, all that. But he also has a platform that can benefit around that model, mm -hmm. right? 
I don't see anybody. I don't see Birdman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> come, come, like, like making the investment he's making and then coming out with that same take. Right. And and that's what I would like to see because nobody has addressed the real. You don't see anybody who's truly being that level of involved, putting that level of money and moving in that type of business model that's also saying, you know what, I see the light. I really shouldn't own any of this, even though I just put that much energy into it. Yeah, because I think the the dark side of it is, and we've talked about this on other episodes, is there's there are so many stories about artists getting finessed over by executives that that's kind of like the that's the the norm. You you right. you we, we now go into these situations expecting it to be one side in that way, but there are lots of executives and even non executives, just people who work in like service based portions of the industry that have been finessed by artists. If, Hell yeah. Probably more. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, like the stories just don't get out there as much, and they're not as compelling. Like oh, yep. executive gets finessed by artists, we champion them. Artists gets finessed by executive. It's, it's pandemonium. Executives, you know? we got a safe space for y'all. <laughs> y'all want to come on the pod and create this propaganda? You know, push the campaign, and let people know that y'all have been hurt too. Yeah, like like <laughs> like they all have been. Like for every Hell yeah. Every executive, I like to say, every person in the music industry has a burn story. Like artists, artists, executives, creatives are like every person has at least one burn story. We yep. just certain ones get more light shown on them than others. So I understand coming into it like, hey, like this artist may be someone like maybe now things are sweet, but I do need to protect myself to a certain degree in this situation. And I, I can't stress this enough that we talking about the early to mid two thousands. There were no TikTok. There yep. were no cheap alternatives to break artists back then. Like mm-hmm. now there's a case for sure artists be able to own their masters and, and such because the channels of distribution and marketing are much more accessible and much and much mm-hmm. uh, cheaper to get access to versus back then. I don't even know what the cost used to be to distribute music back then, but I'm, let's, let's just assume Heavy. a couple of tens of thousands Heavy. just to get that shit out. And now we're talking about the era of the million dollar music video, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the era of the million dollar marketing budgets. Like So we're talking about like like, serious money going to like back then it's probably taking a couple million to break an artist where today it might take a couple hundred thousand you know so yeah. the the magnitude of investment out the gate was expected to be crazy you know and any same person say if i'm putting up a hundred dollars for something i want to start talking about what i'm gonna get back <laughs> in return for this you know what i'm saying what's my ownership gonna be i can imagine putting up a hundred million or whatever the figure might have been and then you know the person at the end of a band like, oh yeah, this this my shit, right? It's like, come on, man. You know that you know the answer to that question. Yeah. Like, you you know the answer to that question. Yeah. I had somebody break it down to me. Like I had a conversation with an executive recently that straight up said to me, he's like, Man, like, you know, if you want more ownership, accept less resources and money from the label. He's like, simple as that. If you want more ownership, accept less from me. That's all. And it I is. think that's fair, right? Like if you want me to own less, then you have to naturally expect that I'm going to do less. That is a simple equation. <laughs> and that's why I said I don't see anybody who's putting in that level of energy and investment mm-hmm. that's also saying, nah, yeah, you should just take everything and own the master. All right. So I want to give a reminder that being independent is not just about not being signed to a label. It's actually making money without being signed to a label, being able to have a sustainable career. And for those of y'all who actually want to be able to make money from your fan base, you're serious about figuring out how to monetize. I have a free video that you can check out. I don't need your email. I don't need your phone number. I don't need any information. All you have to do is go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. And I'm going to show you the lies that artists have been told that have been keeping them, probably you too, from monetizing your fan base and how shifting that perspective has allowed one artist we're working with to be on track to make over $500,000 this year. This is a different era. Don't fall for that trap saying artists can't make money. Artists do not have to be broke. So if you want to escape that trap, go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You do have to make sure you put the www in the beginning when you type it in your URL and watch this free video again. You're not going to be asked to put in your email. You're not going to be asked for your phone number, but it won't be up forever. Check it out. Think about this yourself. Artists who are out there listening, right? If you gave somebody $5, how much are you hurting for that return? How much? All right, cool. You're not really hurting, probably. I hope so. Yeah, right? Hopefully. You put in a million dollars, right? You probably really would like to make that money back. Mm-hmm. Now, 
since you would really like to make that money back, you're probably going to do as much as you can to help get that money back. Mm -hmm. That $5, it's like, I really want the, that five back, maybe off of principle alone, mm -hmm. but it's not worth me like sacrificing my whole life and how I'm moving because there's other opportunities out there, right? Mm -hmm. And you can take that number higher, right? Five dollars is hella low, obviously. Like you could tell you a thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, and for some people, a hundred thousand dollars is only like a thousand dollars in the way their life is set up, right? So it's literally the amount of investment that you have in something. That's how much you're going to be willing to. Like put into it because even if you were making five x right five x on five uh, on a million is five five x on five dollars is twenty five dollars five x on a thousand is five thousand dollars like the the needle doesn't move as much in your life so why would I put that energy I could put it somewhere else and then you talk about the risk and the difficulty of making an artist pop it just it just doesn't add up it's not attractive if I already got this money. Like yeah. I could do things and make decent money with far less risk. Yeah, and I think that's a big part of it too. Because I mean, these arts were coming up in the era where artist entrepreneurship wasn't really a thing. Like I'm, I'm not gonna say you know they never put anything up because I'm, I'm sure every artist reaches a point where they sacrifice something on the business side to make things move. That might be your right. own money. That might be you finding your own resources. Like they've all been there. But th we are talking about an era where a lot of them didn't have to really do much except be artists. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're kind of living the dream that, or we're living the dream that a lot of artists today want to live. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing now are the consequences of li being able to live that dream. It's, it's sometimes less say in certain things regarding your brand, yep. um, less equity and less ownership and things that you may have created. Like these are the sacrifices for it because on the other side you do more or you do everything, but you know to the point of the executive I said I talked to, nobody owns anything. You know what I'm saying? So like it's like what are you willing to risk? Like the labor capital that comes with it or the equity of the thing that you're creating? And you, you said something earlier, right? That I think I think it really speaks to sometimes the artist mentality and ownership is like artists. Y'all are interesting, man. Like y'all will expect. Sometimes expect your team around you to like sacrifice like their health, their life. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes their other businesses, their families, all in the name of your art, which is a very selfish ask. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to understand like it takes a lot for everybody to be able to continue moving forward. And there also has to be a shared end destination that we all would like to achieve for us to even want to continue pushing forward. So if the only, mm -hmm. in, if the only light at the end of the tunnel, is you becoming successful, and I still don't know where I might stand in all of that, there's no real reason or incentive for me to keep pushing forward. Even if you have this idea in your head of everybody winning, but you haven't been able to properly explain like what that looks like in terms of numbers and equity and payouts and things like that, then you can't be mad when the people around you start either making other deals outside of you that now take away their time from you, or start demanding more from you in terms of what you guys are putting in work to create together, yep. you know? So like, it's a, it's a very natural outcome of it. Like either they're gonna ask for more from you or they're gonna wanna go get more from other spaces outside of you. Two things that a lot of times artists are not okay with. Artists usually want their teams to just be focused on them. I've heard that so many times. Man, I mm -hmm. wish my market, I wish I was my marketer's only client. I wish I was my, my graphic artist's only client. I wish I was my videographer's only client. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, there's a lot that comes with that. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to now take care of that person's life and that person's dream in order to, make that a reality for you. And if you're not exactly. in a position to be able to do that or have the resources to be able to do that, then you are going to have to give up certain things to just even keep those people around or make those people want to keep doing the work. And in that era, that was ownership, 100% ownership. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you see it on Shark Tank all the time. They'd be yeah. like, oh man, 5% part of the business and they'll the the, the um, twenty million, you get two point five, and yeah, you get two point five franchise, and, they, <laughs> and they'll be like, "Look, man, <laughs> did you come in here even wanting a deal? Because five percent is not even enough to get me out of bed, yep. right? Like, I'm, I'm not going to put any energy into that. Like, even if I did take this investment, you wouldn't get much from me because yeah. that doesn't excite me. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> if I could sneeze and. And, and sneeze out a five percent deal, you know what I'm saying? Like, or something that's equivalent that maybe shit, I do all the work for, or less work than what you asking me for, you know? And like, I think that's the thing of it too is the risk assessment on um, the risk assessment and risk evaluation from both sides are usually 
different. Like executives, service people, they tend to do risk assessment based on numbers and past experiences. Artists, from my experience, tend to do risk investment that are rooted in uh, what's what I'm looking for, like like possibilities. Like, like possibility and mm-hmm. ideals, right? Like, hey, like I've 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 seen it happen. I know it can happen. Like I believe it can happen. Versus the the executives, like, well, you know, it's nice, but you know, over the last six years, history has proven that the average artist is only going to do whatever the numbers look like, right? Mm-hmm. So they're 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 making risk assessments from two different points possibilities, you know what I'm saying, versus like what, what's kind of seems to be the real and, and be the now. We've seen plenty of artists be right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's always the story of the artists that we, we see all the time on the internet, bro. I believed in myself and nobody else did and and I made it and I became the anomaly. Most of them are wrong. Yeah, most of them, most of them are wrong and even bigger than that is we see the stories of the ones that are possible. We don't hear the stories of the ones that also thought that and it, it didn't happen for them. Exactly. You know, so exactly. you're, you're being bombed with... <laughs> all these positive messages, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Find your motivation where you need to find it. But I think motivation without a, 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 a kick of reality is dangerous, you know, because it's, it's going to it's going to make you make decisions that don't really make sense for either party and you're going to feel justified in, in your delusional requests and, and mm-hmm. responses because like you really feel like you might be that anomaly. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. We all got to wake up and feel like we that guy yep. like, to keep it pushing. You know, there has to be a, a, a at least ten percent of delusion in you to even want to continue doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? You got you kind of crazy. All you listen, all of you listen are kind of crazy and kind of stupid for standing music, bro. That's the reality of it. We kind of crazy and kind of stupid for standing music. You know what I'm saying? It's the reality of choosing to stay in the game. But if you if you push the delusion too far, with no kick of reality. The your future in the game is bleak because you're 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 never going to make proposals and offers to people that that make sense, you know what I'm saying, for both parties and, and motivate both parties to want to, or all parties involved to want to yep. put that work in for you. And you're going to feel like you got screwed over because you thought everything was sweet and now somebody's moving on to a better opportunity doing all these other things because you didn't have a sense of grounding in reality. I'm not saying take a bad deal. I'm not saying sign away your masters. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying none of that. I'm just saying understand based on what the exchange is, that should be a, a clear representation of what you want their incentive to be, mm-hmm. right? Like give them something based on the effort that you would expect of them. If they don't have that hanging over their heads or that opportunity ahead of them, then you can't expect. Now you might get even better and you might then be able to say, okay, yeah, you helped me down and I'm going to hopefully reward you even bigger and other and new opportunities that might come from it. Mm-hmm. Great. But again, expectation Throw that out the window because this just this is just the business. This is just the numbers. This is literally economics in its finest, right? Social economics, how people move based on the incentives. And um, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, Irv, obviously he's very brash with it. And like his situation, all the ins and outs, this isn't me standing up for him and his situation. Mm-hmm. But it is like a reflection of, again, like a lot of artists – they don't even want to hear something like that. And and I think they need to at least consider something like that. You got this dude right here, Philly Fresh Youth FC. He said, what people don't understand about the music industry is 99% of artists don't solely write their music, especially singers. So they should get 100% of their masters when it took a team, label, investing ideas, music, lyrics into them. So that's another point. That's why Bow Wow was like, I didn't expect to own my masters. I didn't need my masters. I was just performing the songs and I, I made money off my touring, but I wasn't writing my songs and none of that. Mm-hmm. All right. When, when he was with JD, it's not that simple. I have friends in, in the music industry and it's not what people think. Of course, there are artists who make this them, make hit this, hits themselves, but the vast majority don't. You'd cry when you find out your favorite artist was just a vessel and literally wrote none of their own records. Mm-hmm. There's a point right there. And, and we always keep it, I mean, well, not we, but the creative community always keeps it to the music creation, which is a great point. But he also touched on something that comes from the label's resources, like the ideation around things like the marketing, the, the creative assets that come with it, right? The things that branded and, and cemented to the audience. Like a lot of times, like, like there are some artists who are very involved with that stuff, but there are a lot of artists who, who aren't, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they just, to the point I made earlier, just want to just be the the, the performer, like you said, mm-hmm. but want the 
all the benefits. I don't know. That, that, that was a great point. I think that was a great point. Really great point. Boom Man said, which we need to have him on a podcast at some point. If you've never invested in an artist or spent hundreds of thousands, you, should, you shouldn't speak on this. Your opinion doesn't matter until you've done it and been burnt by one of these artists. Then give your opinion. If, if not, your opinion doesn't even matter. There it is. There it is. Someone, <laughs> someone else's thoughts. Uh, let me see. Let me see if there's one more good one. I wouldn't give the masters up either. They made a deal and they got to stand on it. That's also another aspect of it. If you make a deal, you make a deal. Um, that's why you sign contracts and have an agreement. I I think it's interesting, this whole idea of doing deals just to be able to negotiate. Right? Like I understand that things can be renegotiated for sure. Right? But to come in and expect someone just to want to renegotiate just cause, right? Like that doesn't make sense. Like unless they're incentivized to have you want in the best position, um, incentivize to give you more and better opportunities in some way. I don't like. I don't know. Like it would depend on the deal and how things are set up. I, I feel like it shouldn't be this whole thought of I'm just gonna take a million dollars from these people, and as soon as I get any kind of popping, and I, then I can argue I have leverage. Then I want to re- renegotiate because niggas never want to ne- renegotiate. When they don't have the leverage, mm-hmm. right? So you at least acknowledge and know that at some point you did not have the leverage, and you are in some way admitting that you are not the sole reason that you got here. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, like I'm, I'm gonna shut up long enough for you to put me in position to make an argument. Right to then make an <laughs> argument. You weren't having that argument a year ago, but now all of a sudden you're the only reason this thing is popping. It's like, uh, uh, like that's like telling your parents or something. You know what I mean? That like, oh yeah, you popping in whatever your job is, and I'm here not because of you. Now, you know, there's some people who got some crazy backgrounds. That's crazy different. Family We're not talking about that. We're talking <laughs> about a pretty average, your parents at least raised you, fed you, put you in school, mm. and then you figure it out when you got older. Yeah, you you figure it out, you popping, you standing on your own right now. However, like you can't deduct everything yeah. that I, I did. I kept you alive long enough to figure it out. I kept you alive <laughs> in this game long enough to figure it out. Yeah. For you to get enough <laughs> visibility to yeah. then have that shot to become who you are. Like at least not acknowledge that. Now you want me to you want me to like damn make no money? I, you just want me to just make my money back? Mm-hmm. I don't want to just make my money back. That's stupid. Why would I have done this? Just just make my money back. Mm-hmm. Or make my money back times you know, maybe 3%. Like, no, I would have went to the bank for that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, I think there's that argument that y'all got to sit in y'all selves. And the more you sit in that argument yourself, the easier it is for you to make a deal that makes sense on all sides and benefits you or helps keep you out of just making that deal because you're like, yeah, based on what I want to give up and what they would be incentivized to do based off of the little I am willing to give up, it doesn't make sense. So I need to figure this out myself. The problem is y'all not wanting to figure that shit out yourself and go without. You're trying to dip in both ponds, and sometimes you can't do both. Mm-hmm. So again, hey, no labels necessary. No investors or whatever necessary. <laughs> However, it's an option, and if you choose that option, you need to take go in with the right mentality. Yeah, know what you're getting into. Know what you get into. Pros and the cons. Yes, yes. This is another clip from No Labels Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. We out. Peace.